Hey, this is Steve Bloom, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. to Altered Geek Unlimited, episode 74. I'm your host, Steve Megatron Phillips, and joining me this week is not Mike TFG and Blanchard, and not Mike Booth Ninja Powers, but... The one, the only, the awesome, Mike the Birdman Dodd. Welcome back, sir. I am reasonably surprised that it's just you and I this week, actually. I'm kind of surprised as well. Because I'm thinking... Like, I, I've always seen Blanchard as the easily excitable golden retriever of podcasting. He's like, hey, guys, hey, guys, got a microphone? Hey, 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 want to record? That's how I picture Mike every day. Literally, just got his hand on the record button all the time. Well, but lately, he's been still like, like old yeller. Somebody took, yeah, it, exactly. took him out back. Just put a 45 to the back of his head. Man, do you realize how much more brutal old yeller death scene would be today with modern firearms, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, uh, welcome to FPS Russia. Today we take up old yeller with a 50 caliber machine gun. And it's a Russian. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome, I'm telling you. You get the guy, like, FPS Russia from YouTube, and just have him shoot old yeller. My god, this got dark fast. Uh, no, I have an old western and all of a sudden a Russian mobster comes in. Be fucking sick, but he has to look like, like friggin' Ivan Drago from like Rocky Four. In fact, all Russians I'm convinced look like him or Bridget Nielsen from Red Sonja. That's right. I'm pulling out the old <laughs> '80s references tonight. Uh, nice. So, what have you been up to? Uh, almost exclusively nothing but Call of Duty. And okay, um, I was supposed to come back to twig last friday which you've noticed i haven't had a nerd news up mostly because i i've been dealing with a hardware problem which kind of ties in what we're going to talk about later um i got the new nintendo 3ds last week awesome i just got it working today because i had to wait for a new memory card and then i had to call nintendo engineers to get them to work on it from the back end because me and a bunch of other journalists had a bunch of trouble trying to transfer our system content over because Nintendo's eShop was like, hey, you're not supposed to exist yet. So we had to figure that out. So I got that working today. I've been playing a shit ton of Call of Duty. I'm on my fifth prestige right now. Now, what Um, console is it for? I'm currently playing it on Xbox One. Okay. I'm surprising, there is is a surprising little amount of 10-year-old shit talkers. I've only come across, like, in the entire two months since the game came out back in November, maybe 10. Maybe. I've heard little kids talk, but none of them are talking shit, surprisingly. I've heard a few older people, but surprisingly, Xbox One's pretty quiet. I think they're all still playing on 360. Um... I've also been playing this game because I'm a huge wrestling fan. And I discovered this game is very much like crack. There's a game on the iOS. It's probably on Android, too. It's called WWE Supercard. And it's like a card game. You play it with five cards. And you just see if your card's better than the other guy's. Or if you use a modifier, does his card not beat yours? You might have, like... Daniel Bryan versus uh, Kurt Henning or something like that. And Kurt Henning may be stronger than Daniel Bryan, but Daniel Bryan may be faster. So you might play a modifier to make Daniel Bryan stronger and he can beat him. It's retardedly addicting. Like, uh, like literally, Steve, I was, I was in bed earlier sick this week. I drained my battery twice playing it in bed. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like, my god, I am such a loser. But it was a lot of fun, so I did that this week. Um, what else did I do this week? Watched uh, a couple of movies and pretty much just worked on my 3DS stuff. 
that's about it. Because I go back to work as of today when this episode will go up. So, uh, yeah, that is my life. Well, I, uh, I've had school this week again, uh, which was interesting because Monday, or not Monday, Tuesday, we had to recite the lines of the, the dialogue we had to memorize. Uh, which I don't know what the hell it's an excerpt from, but it's from some other play or book or something. Um, it was amazing to me the amount of people that didn't have it memorized. Because I'm normally terrible about that. <laughs> the only thing that got me through remembering it was uh, I did it in the persona of the Joker. <laughs> um, which is the only reason I remember it, which now I can kind of recite it in different character voices and my own without having to really think about it. But um, they had everybody going up and, and doing their portrayal of it in front of the class. And um, those that have met me like in person will realize that I'm kind of introspective in a sense. Which is interesting, considering on a podcast or sitting on the computer, I can sit and talk somebody's ear off. But when I'm in person, I'm like, uh, I don't know who the hell you are. No, oh, you're a shy motherfucker. <laughs> yes. Um, always have been, which is, again, another funny thing that I, I sit here and podcast and talk. And then, um, anyhow, in, in that class, I don't do well. And this is any class. I don't do well standing up in front of people and having people stare at me and have me talk. If I'm sitting on my ass, not singled out, but I'm in mixed in with the crowd, I can talk fine. Which is kind of weird to me because I can sit there and throw smart ass comments or, or add to the, the discussion in the classroom and have people look at me that way, but I can't stand singled out. Basically you can't stand the camera being focused solely on you. Basically. Um, so I get up there, and I'm fully expecting to screw this entire thing up. And luckily, some people were using a chair as like a sit-down prop. So I sat there and was able to... Um, it, I was trying to avoid eye contact with people <laughs> as much as possible. And I'm sitting there just belting out with uh, the Joker in the middle of the conversation and you know doing this entire run of it, and people were just like, holy crap. <laughs> and then uh, the teacher actually would uh, mostly when everybody else got done, he would say, OK, thanks, you know, because it was for a grade. And me, he's like, I could definitely see the animation there and in, in the, the character and blah, 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 blah from, you know, I can tell it's a cartoon character, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I says, that's what happens when you watch Mark Hamill portray the Joker for, you know, up teen hours. <laughs> um, so I did that. And then. Um, I've been working on, uh, the GCRN awards, which, uh, we were able to move on to phase two, which, uh, phase one was the nominees. Phase two was the, um, actually voting with the, uh, top fives of every category that was picked by the listeners. And, uh, we got almost, almost as many votes since doing that as we did for the nominees part. And it's this the the voting has only been active for about eight hours. Damn. <laughs> so. Times, yes, it is great. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. Um, the other thing I've kind of had a problem with, and this is like just more so like I don't know if it's the other people too, but it it's more so a pet peeve on my behalf, and and I hope nobody holds this against me, but it bothers me when people vote but they vote on one thing out of like the 30 categories because it's um, in, like we did an, an external podcast network voting and what's happening between that and one of the syndicated things is um, people are voting for that one item and then the rest of the, the, the voting, they just left it blank. So I don't know if that would bother you, but it bothers me. See, I would narrow down the category so people don't have to go through fucking 30 things. 
Like, well, I mean, it's example, all on one page. I would do that because I'm like, well, here's the thing I actually care about. Here's... Well, see, because we did movies, we did TV, we did comics, we did gaming, and then we did like the the different categories of the Geekcast Radio Network podcast, and then we did the external podcast, which. Um, again, every year, like last year, we chose everything that went into the top fives. We didn't give people an option. It was our, it was whatever we chose as the top five for the, every category, um, to vote on. And this year I have it all set up as drop down. So literally everything's in there. You just have to select which one you want and then hit submit. And it's all on one page. So there's no clickbait. If you're dealing with the fast food Jack in the box. I needed it yesterday. I need it now. See, cause <laughs> Yeah, and see, my mentality on it the first time around when we were doing the nominees is I almost wanted to disqualify them just for doing that. <laughs> yeah, because it would kind of skew your data. but Because, I mean, there would be like a huge influx on the one category and nothing on everything else. So that's the only thing that bothers me about d- doing the awards thing compared to doing something like a wars tournament. Well, you know who the true winner is of all this? Who? Holly Shore. <laughs> 2014 Man of the Year, just saying. Who's that again? Exactly. The 80s called, they want him back. Exactly, I'm like, fuck, man, we need the weasel! I don't know why I'm talking about him, but that, I am! That's, that was hilarious. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, so, yeah, besides that, I've been working on uh, actually two different websites. Uh, the. Um, Mine. Part of, yes, yours, Twig. And then um, I don't know if you're familiar with this site, but it's it used to be kind of a medium sized Transformer site, uh, Transformers Network. Is there erotica? No. Don't care. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I used to be a mod on there way back in the day. Um, and something, some unfortunate events happened, and it got sold out from under the person that owned it. Um, so this person came to me with the idea of recreating the site, just changing the URL because we can't get the original one back because the other person's a douchebag. Um, and it's been down for about seven years, so I'm having to design it from the ground up with them and uh should be interesting when it gets done so yeah that's what i've been keeping busy with among among that and watching television yeah i watched uh what did i check out? i watched the new episode of the flash this week which was pretty cool seeing captain cold and heat wave which well, i that's thought was name. pretty freaking badass so i'm hoping we get more like i'm hoping captain boomerang makes it over to um, team up with all those guys. I think he will. I, I think that right now they're just building his rogues, and now that he's, you know, out in the open and that kind of stuff. And uh, Well, Kevin Boomerang uh, was on, what was it, Arrow before the season, yeah, whatever. He was on the crossover. Yeah. And then there was Raza Ghoul, although supposedly they're not going to use the Lazarus Pit to bring back Oliver, which I totally think they should. I, I watched the episode of it. It's such a cop out. I haven't had a chance to. I still have to watch the other seasons. Like I, I watch on episodes here and thinking, all right, cool. There's that. There's that. I know. I'm interested, but I don't have the time. So maybe uh, when there's a lull, maybe when my wife takes her March break or spring break from the kids, maybe I'll get a chance to do that. Um, what else? Uh, Shield wasn't new this week. Agent Carter wasn't new this week. Uh, well, that's right, S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't come back until March. That's a show... Neither does Blacklist. I was like, eh. So, I kind of in, indulge my guilty pleasure of Master Chef Jr. Which, my god, these kids are friggin' awesome. I wish I was that talented in the kitchen. Like, at all. It's You know what? I honestly love the Food Network. That being a chunky bastard... I love Guy Fieri, although he's ultimately the worst thing to happen to food in 20 years. Um, <laughs> and, and and I'll tell you why. He encourages you to eat things that have been deep fried, covered in sugar, smothered in cheese, and nacho dip. Like, here, here's a heart attack. I want you to eat this and wait 20 minutes and see what happens to you. 
sort of thing. Like, it's And then terrible. they spontaneously combust? Yeah, like, I, although, honestly, when me and my wife went to visit Kevin Smith's comic book men um, two years ago, or like a year ago, whatever, we actually planned out a route to Jersey that would take us by as many of the diners, diners, drive-ins, and dives places as possible. We even saw the diner from the end of The Sopranos. We were so like, okay... We're only going to be here, and we have, like, no money. We're at least going to eat awesome. So, go fat, people. Um, because, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, like, that's a lot of what I've been watching. In fact, sometimes uh, my wife will go off to work, and she'll leave the TV on in the living room. And I'll wander out, you know, in my zombie state, and there'll be Gordon Ramsay prepared. He's got the show. It's, like, called Gordon Ramsay's 100 Meals or something. And he's less pissy here. He's like, he's almost mellow. Well, they told him not to be British, and that was the big thing. I guess so. And he's and he's giving me all these tips. And I'm just sitting here just listening like, man, it's really weird not to hear him curse at people. And he's like, you can use salt to bring out the moisture in the fish or something. He's talking about, like, like how to crisp up fish skin, which I had no idea how to do. I'm thinking, man... That's really interesting. And I'm thinking, man, maybe I should go back to bed. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird the stuff you learn on those shows. And sometimes some of the girl chefs, I don't mean to be sexist here, are motherfucking hot as shit. Um, there was one chef. I think Rachel Ray's hot, too. Um, her name is Giada whatever. Like, she, I don't know, she's this hot Italian woman. I used to watch her show religiously a couple years ago when I was, like, single. And I was like, man, just tell me how to bake it, man. I'll do anything you want. Just please keep talking. Um, it's a little bit sad, and I'm not afraid to admit that, that uh, food TV is my guilty pleasure. If I can't shove it in my face, at least I'll learn how to make it. I don't know what I'm saying about myself by revealing these deep, dark truths right now. But this is Aldrin Geek. You don't know what you're gonna get, but at least well, we're not complaining. <laughs> yeah, we're we're being geeky in a true. I'm just strange way. <laughs> hey, man. Well, when I started Twig with Steve Saylor, he's like, as long as you're passionate about it, you can be a geek about it. Actually, it's really weird how food geeky has become this thing. Like, there's now these things called foodies. I mean, like, it's weird. They know as much about food and gas gastro food and all this other crazy shit that I know about Dungeons and Dragons and Star Wars. It's ridiculous the amount of knowledge these people have. Or some of these guys, you don't expect them to have all this really cool skills or background in the culinary arts. I don't know. It, it's really cool, though. And just seeing some of the really neat restaurants that pop up with geeky themes. There's actually one restaurant. There's a show in Canada. You should look it up on YouTube, guys. It's called You Gotta Eat Here. And it's hosted by a guy named John Catucci, and he visits different restaurants across Canada. There's one restaurant in Calgary, and it serves nothing but hot dogs. Here's the twist. They put really weird crap on them. There's one hot dog, and I'm actually tempted to make it. It's an all-beef wiener with peanut butter, jelly, and Captain Crunch. And I know, hmm. I don't know, they do something else to it. But it's just, it's really weird toppings of, and it's supposedly really, 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 really good. Um, there was another place, uh, which is near London, Ontario, which is like a few hours uh, south of me. And I went to a place, and you would never think that peanut butter and pineapple on a on a cheeseburger is godlike. Like, god-tier awesome. And it's like this 1950s-style diner. But it's like 1950s as if seen from Back to the Future. Like, it's really, really weird. Hmm. Or you'll see these restaurants, they'll have really cool, like, arcade cabinets in, like, some of them. Some of these restaurants still have the little jukeboxes at the table that you can put your, like, dime in. It'll activate the jukebox across the place. And it's so sweet that that kind of stuff still exists. And I don't know. I mean... I think of, of all the hobbies and obsessions you could have, food's relatively harmless, depending. 
I think most most of geeky things are pretty harmless for the most part. Um, and then kind of talking about the food thing, there's this uh, channel where uh, the only reason I know of her is from the uh, um, from the Warp Zone videos that I've seen her in. Um, but it's that uh, Rosanna Pancino or whatever. She does like the kind of geeky foods or baked goods. Yeah. Like does Bomberman cupcakes or does like. Um, My wife is yelling from the other room. It's called Nerdy Nummies, I think. Yes. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. So, I mean, like if you like kind of surf her channel, she has like all kinds of like geeky, like, like Borg Cube cakes and then, you know, uh, Metroid cupcakes, like all kinds of like geeky stuff like that. It's just kind of interesting to see what you could make out of food. My friend from the prototype, his girlfriend, uh, Tiffany, she used to run a blog <coughs> called The Nerd Hearth. I don't, I, don't, I don't know whether she still keeps it up, though, but she had a goal to bake the items out of Skyrim that she could possibly find recipes to. And about a year ago, she brought me over a sweet roll and a honey treat, like, and she made it just like they would make it in Skyrim. And it was so amazingly good. I was like, oh my god, please come back with more of these. And I've been begging my wife, like, please, here's the recipe from Skyrim. The video game is telling you to make it. Please make it. Um, it was so good. I've also seen nerdy websites that have, like, they'll be dedicated to different drinks. Um, like, I think it's called the Drunken Moogle or something like that. They'll have, like, here's the um, Hadouken or stuff like that. I remember I went to a Capcom press event about three or four years ago. It was whenever Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came out, and they were serving us um, Street Fighter and Marvel-themed food and drink. And I remember having a Green Hulk burger and, like, this Ryu fireball shot. And it was really weird. And then they gave us aprons. It was really weird. I, I don't know why I just remembered that now. Um, <laughs> and another random memory. I remember we went, uh, I was uh, at a press event for Halo ODST. And they had people dressed up as UNSC officers. And we're playing at this PR building in Toronto. And they're, they're serving us these Covenant sliders. And they keep feeding me, I think they were called energy swords. And they were these shots or these little alcoholic drinks. And I don't remember a lot past firefight mode because it was awesome. They just kept feeding them to me. I guess, you know, they look at oh, the big guy. He could take it. Um, it was an awesome time. Um, Sounds like it. Oh, my God. That, that was the thing, though. There was another time at a video game event, once again. It, actually, this was my first event. I got invited by Microsoft. They usually have this thing in Canada called X, which is like the Microsoft showcase or what's coming out for Christmas time and in the fall. So they took us to this really weird retro bar. And the, this is when Forza, I think it was Forza 2 or 3 was coming out for the Xbox 360. And the power went out because one of the really expensive cars had hit a pole just down the street. And it is hotter than Satan's ball sack in this place. They've got the door open. They're trying to feed us all the drinks while they're still cold. So I remember my friend Pierce filled one of our knapsacks up to the brim so heavy we could barely move this thing without looking suspicious, full of Red Bull. And me, Steve Saylor, and a few other people, they just kept feeding us stuff in the bar. So I remember playing Halo 3, like, months before it came out, or what, or Halo something, I remember. And we drank nothing but screwdrivers and played Rock Band and Tony Hawk. It was balls. <laughs> and with the Spike TV Video Game Awards, they spoil you. Um, when, when it was good. This year's was questionable at best um i'm hoping someday i can go to stuff like that i just <laughs> you know what some of the really cool uh smaller events are really neat like 
I'm really hoping, like, every year I get invited to stuff like Toy Fair, and it's mostly because I don't want to stay in New York that I don't go. Like, I got two personal invites from Playmates this year and Jazzware, and I'm just thinking, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. And there's the Game Developers Conference out in San Francisco, and it's mostly just getting around that I don't do as many of those, but PAX can be a tremendously fun time. I think this weekend is pet. This weekend or next weekend is PAX South, and MAGFest is happening. That's a really fun convention. But I find the ones that are professional but not trade show are the best. Like I said, PAX, if you're really into the gaming scene or what they're talking about, it is such a fun time. Like, I did PAX East for two or three years into the best concerts of my life with Proto Man and MC Frontalot and Mega Ran and whatnot, and going to different panels. I sat in a panel with uh, the Bioware people, the same guys who made Mass Effect and Dragon Age, and they're answering questions about Dragon Age 3, which I had no idea what the hell it was about, but I wanted to hear, because they were going to talk about Mass Effect towards the end of it. And they brought in the woman from that... Comic Con documentary from a few years ago that was done by Morgan Spurlock, who had she looked like Femme Shep. She had the guy who came out as Rex in the giant animatronic costume. But the okay. cool thing about that was they had all these cosplayers who looked like the people from Dragon Age, like with the armor and everything, and it was like real metal or weathered foam to look like it. But holy shit, it was so impressive. And the cool thing is these developers. They'll hang out with you. Like, I went to what they called the Bioware base, and it was it was the middle of the day on Sunday, and they're, they're just hanging out. So I'm like, dude, can you sign my game? I'm like, yeah? What do you want to know? I'm like, okay, here's a question. This happened in Mass Effect 2. Will this affect Mass Effect 3? And they're like, and I, and I, I go on about this theory that I have, and I'm like, and you know, we never thought of it like that. We'll get back to you in six months. Um, they never did follow up on it, but it would have been really cool had they did. Um, but, yeah, like, if you go to the right events, they can be a lot of fun. And I'm trying to think of another show you might dig. Um, I don't know so much about Comic-Con, like, the really big corporate events. Like, I'm not, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to experience some of the bigger ones. I just... Oh, yeah. I, at least once in my life, I'd like to go to something like that. I don't know how much I'd enjoy it because of how busy they usually are. The um, thing is, it's the people that you go with that can really make or break it. But you can also make a lot of really cool friends. I Actually, one of the best experiences I had was the first time I went to PAX East back in 2010. I, w- I went to PAX on less than $300, which, let me tell you, first off, that's stupid. Um... Second of all, I was stalked by Adam Sessler the entire weekend. It was really weird. Um, but anyway, I'm sitting in the line to go see Video Game Orchestra, which is this Boston-based group. They play video game music, and they're these prodigy musicians. They sound amazing. Look them up on YouTube, VGO. And I'm sitting there in line, and I start talking to these two girls. And they're asking me where I'm from, and I'm talking with them, just going back and forth, back and forth. And eventually... and I let, and I'm mentioning that I'm diabetic. I'm thinking, oh, crap, I haven't eaten today. Shit, I don't have a lot of money left. Okay, if I don't eat, I should be fine. If I eat something now, I should be fine until I get back to my hotel room, which was like six hours later. They're like, dude, you know what? I'll buy you dinner. I'm like, what, really? And they did. And you get some really awesome kindness like that at conventions. I mean, especially like your taxes, because everybody kind of knows... We're all here for the same reason. No one should be a dick to each other. And nine times out of ten, everybody there is really, really awesome to each other. Um, Later that night, I had to leave the concert hall because I was just feeling not good. And I gave, I got these primo seats because I'm kind of handicapped. And I gave it to these uh, two people that really, really wanted to go to the show. They were waiting outside for someone to leave. And they were thrilled about it like you can meet some really awesome people another guy was filming a documentary uh for pax and we stayed like we're still friends on facebook right now his name is jason 
And he is like the cheerleader for PAX and for MAGFest and all that stuff. And you meet some really fantastic people, especially Steve. Since you've had a web presence for so long, odds are you've got fans out there that would be psyched as hell to see you. So you should try and take it into one of these things. Like, for example, I'm finding out right now what convention I'm going to do this year. I only end up doing one or two conventions a year uh, as a guest. And I'm waiting for confirmation on this one, but interacting with fans can be a thing too. But even if you're not a web personality, just going to one of these things and hanging out, like playing a board game. Like one of the, one of the things I want to do this year, for example, is go to Indiana. I know of all places and go to Gen Con, which is this huge role playing convention or go down. Yeah, I've heard of that one. Like, Oh, that's my dream. And I, I will say there's there's a convention that we've been going to for two years for uh, for Geekcast Radio, and it's uh, it's called Grand Con. It's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh yeah, we uh, talked about that um, about ten episodes ago, give or take. Something like that. It was in September. That's when we went. Um, but it's it's interesting because it's it's all. Um, for the most part, it's I, I'd say it's a good seventy five percent board gaming. Uh, which is what it's what the key element of it is is the board games, uh, but it also has um, you know your normal parts of the comic convention with the vendors and everything else, um, and the and the artists and and whatnot. And you know we were there, uh, we had a table, so we kind of would take turns exploring and BSing around and handing out promo discs of Geekcast Radio stuff. And uh, um, but I mean, it was kind of interesting the first year we went because we bumped into a couple other podcasters that I didn't realize we knew. <laughs> um, just because they happened to come up to the booth, and one of them was like, "Where's Blanchard?" I'm like, "In Kentucky," <laughs> <laughs> and um, w- which was hilarious. And uh, I ended up having a bunch of conversations about comics. Of course, we were like outside the door, like close to all the board gaming, so people were just stopping by having conversations. Whereas this year, we were kind of in the mix with all the vendors where people were buying stuff so people were just kind of passing by um i I would definitely say i had more fun last year than this year but i think still for me the convention that that has been the most fun for me has been uh tfcon that i went to uh 2011 i think um steve you gotta come up and do a con bravo sometime which is in Toronto, so not far from where TFCon is, probably about like an hour east of there. If you're into yeah. nerdy shit, I think you'll have a blast. Yeah, and see, the other thing was is I had nobody I was going with for that convention, but I did end up bumping into like uh, four or five other people, uh, one of which was involved with the uh, Beast Wars Dark class uh, that I'm doing, and then the uh, um, the other people I knew from Twitter and transformer forums so it was kind of nice um but and i I had a blast going to that um but most of the problem is is trying to find the money and the time to go see and that's the thing though like if you pick the right convention it can be really cheap for example um magfest for example which it's a smaller convention like under ten thousand, and you can go for the week for about 600 if you get if, if you go and you split the room with a few other di- different people, and travel can't be that bad. Depending, there's also like a bunch of really good restaurants around it. The good thing about conventions like that is you don't have to spend money if you don't want to. In fact, um, I've gone to two Magfests. The most I've spent was sixty bucks. All I bought was CDs. My rule was if I can't fit it inside a backpack, it's not coming home with. Um, and am I going to use it more than five times? Um, hell, I went to PAX East one year, and I brought, like, $1,500. Thinking, oh, my God, there's going to be so much cool merch here. And there was. I came home with a board game. I had 50 bucks. That was it. See, I spent, um, what was it? Probably 60 bucks buying, like, autographed art. Yeah. At, the, at, at Grand Con. Artist Alley can be the best part of a convention, too, or the small vendor area, not guys who are selling Super Mario 3 for, like, 50 bucks. But if you go to the people, there's a guy, uh, I want to say his name is Rice Hat Samurai, 
he does a lot of the smaller conventions here in Ontario. He does really cool custom geek jewelry, stuff like that. You'd have to look him up. So if I got your name wrong, dude, I'm so sorry. Um, there's a there's actually um, a convention that I'm kind of interested in, and I was I was kind of wanted to go last year, and this year I'm kind of hedging towards doing it because um, Motor City Comic Con, which is like Michigan's. You know, I've heard um, a lot of good things about that. I actually know some I've people heard, in Toronto that go. I've heard good things and I've heard bad things. I've heard that they're just batshit disorganized. Um, I've also heard things of various uh, people that are uh, doing the autographs, like the the actors. I've actually uh, heard that there's there's been uh, um, because you know Michigan, we have stupid ass people that like to piss and moan and fight. Um, in lines over stuff, uh, you know, because we're in a close proximity. That's just how we are. We don't like people. So, um, and, and they've actually caused actors to just up and leave. Wow. The convention. So it, that's what I've heard, like from various people that have gone. So I just, um, it, plus the unfortunate part is it lands on my anniversary every year. Um, and of course, this particular year, the one year I was going to get my wife to go, she's pregnant, and I'm going to have a son born around that time, so not going to be going this year. Um, but uh, the other convention that is, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Yumicon. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, anyways, they're in Detroit as well. Um, in it, they usually hold it in like November. Um, every year and. Uh, I think they've done it for like 10 years or something now, but it's like a 24 hour, like two or three day convention. <coughs> yeah. Just, just kind of like, um, kind of like, uh, mag fest. Yeah. I've, I've got friends that are going to Yumicon. But, um, they also run a new convention that started last year, which is one that I was kind of interested in. It's called the Midwest media expo. Heard about it. Um, it's essentially they, um, uh, it, it's basically all like your your web personalities and that kind of stuff go. Um, it's a, like a pop culture event similar to comic conventions, um, but instead of only focusing on comics, they do like um, you know animation, TV, film, literature, video games, tabletop gaming, comics, and internet culture. So like people like us. Yeah, it's a lot like uh, Com Bravo that happens here in Hamilton uh, every year. So well, they man, have like you should break- totally go and pitch yourself as a guest. Uh, Mind you, if you think you're nervous talking in front of your classmate, imagine doing it in front of a room. Yeah, I, I'd be better off going and, and experiencing it as a fan first, and then yeah, trying to. That's true, and I do recommend you do that because that's the cool thing about. It's never been easier to be a geek in like decades than it is now because you can go to these conventions and odds are you'll meet someone. Or there's an experience built for you. Hell, um, when I was talking about uh, Gen Con earlier, uh, it's a role-playing convention, as I mentioned. And there's even a thing for the wives of the, of the people that go. So if the wives could give a shit less about what Thacko means or rolling insanity, like me. they can go hang out and do crafts and yoga and all sorts of other th- things that may be of more interest to them. And well, the girls have a blast. Here, here's the funny part about the the Midwest Media Expo. They're having the uh, the guy that's um, on YouTube called the Black Nerd. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. good uh, guy. He's going to be there. He was there last year. Um, it looks like Doug Walker's going, uh, and like Lindsay Ellis and people like that. You know, from Channel Awesome and all people among that I've other worked with good people. Yeah, among other people that are you know going that are. Um, regular celebrities like you know the kid that played Kevin on Supernatural and stuff like that, and voice actors and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, so I mean, I, I'm kind of interested in going. I just I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to or not. It just kind of depends. Sometimes, Steve, I'm. If you can make it up to Con Bravo, you have a room. I will pop your pop culture cherry, <laughs> and show you what it's like to be like a like a guest in a minor celebrity at one of these things. Come to Canada again. All basically, Canadian. you just gotta pay for gas and your food. That's it. Yep. End of July. Make it happen. 
Because I think it'd be awesome just to hang out with you and do a... We could do an Altered Geek Live. That would be awesome. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's so much fun just being able to kind of do this stuff now. And like I said, I've made some pretty cool friends along the way. And I've had some really awkward conversations. I think my favorite, one of my favorite con memories was asking a random guy in a kilt at five o'clock in the morning, what was his favorite animal penis? He replied with echidna. It, wow. Oh yeah. And then we started talking about dolphin sex. Um, these are the conversations you can have at a 24 hour convention in the middle of the night. Um, because you're exhausted. Because, oh my God, was I ever. It's weird though. Like for like, Conventions like that, like MAGFest, um, yeah, I sat up with my friends Pete and who I'd known for years, but I met this girl named Krista, who turns out was a friend of mine's girlfriend at the time. We must have hung, we hung out that entire convention, and I'd known her for like maybe three hours. We played trivia together at one of the events. That's the type of friendship you make there, and they can be amazing. Like, you will have a con family. At some point, if you go to these things often enough. Yeah, like, yeah, actually, my, my wife just mentioned this to me. Krista is my con girlfriend. We don't do anything like that. But if, if I need something, bang. And we just hang out and keep each other company and make sure, you know, no one gets bored or whatever. And, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's really freaking cool. Like, my friend Justin was my my PAX ambassador, he brought me into that world. He doesn't go to PAX anymore due to, like, stupid politics I could really give a shit less about. Um, Ask Michael about his con dress. Yes. I wore a dress at a convention. Oh, yeah. In front of Doug Walker and Lindsay Ellis, actually. Tell the story. Good times. Uh, Yeah, I walked down the balcony in my wife's sundress. Look Doug Walker down from his balcony. I'm like, look upon your future and tremble, Doug Walker. He's like, that's really fucked up, Mike. I'm like, you're right, it is. And I went back into the room. Um, nice. Yeah, so that was probably in front of about a thousand or more people. Good times. This is what happens if you have no change. Well, kudos to you. <laughs> hey, man. You gotta, be, you gotta have something to wear a dress in front of people. Um, but... You know, Steve, like I said, I really want to bring you out to, like, some of these things and get your geek. I want you to get a geek chubby. I'll see what I can do. Damn right you will. Please don't let your son be born in July. Um, no, he'll, he'll be May. Yes, it's enough time to recover, so it's not quite the douchebag period. Eh, it should be fine. Could be. Could be still douchebag territory. Geek cast radio listeners, what is douchebag territory? Can we get Steve to Canadian land? I do have a passport. E? Make it happen. We'll set we'll set up a donation button. It'd be awesome. It'd be so much fun. Think of the Oh, I'd love to go. Like I said, you've got a room, so the big expense is already knocked out. Where's he from? He's from Detroit, ish. Oh, ish. so easy. See? It's a hop, skip, and a jump over a bridge. Plans are being made. Plans are being made. It's like a four-hour drive, I think. Um, It'd be like three, four hours on the border. That's it. I'm trying to think of like of like other really neat things. That uh... actually, it's funny. We were talking about this before the show, and then we just always segued into Conventionville. Conventionville again, but. Um... You've obviously heard my wife in the background a few times. We were, and we were talking about this off air like a few weeks ago, doing a podcast on being the geek dad or the geek married guy. And since Blanchard, I'm pretty sure the only relationship he's had in the last 10 years is a puggle former. No offense. Um, it's not something that, you know, he can really give a perspective on. And it's kind of funny because, Steve, your wife – from what I understand of her, tolerates your geekiness. She's actually gotten used to my geekiness. But tolerating. She, <laughs> she tolerates the podcasting. Um, 
My wife, for example, is geek light. However, she can impress the hell out of me sometimes, and she'll pull out a technical term from a role-playing game or from Firefly or something like that. She'll pull a random, like, she'll randomly just pull a 180 on me. I'm like, how the hell did you know that? Uh, sort of thing. And, I don't know, finding that right geek match, it's hard as hell. Although I don't think I could date someone as geeky as me, because I think I'd want to punch them. Well, because then you wouldn't know everything about that subject. Oh, yeah. And you and, wouldn't want somebody uh, showing you up. And we get an endless debate. Although, because Blair is a geek in, like, Harry Potter land, for example, I was pointing out the various flaws in the magical system in Hogwarts and how, essentially, it's a death trap every year. Um, and we just got in this really weird philosophical debate about Hogwarts. And that's the kind of conversations I'm glad I can have, yet I don't want her telling me about the first appearance of Batman and when did he first fight Spider-Man and was it considered canonical or whatever. Well, like, my wife and I, we have, uh, because I've gotten her to watch enough comic book movies because she forces me to watch horror movies. Um, Dude, I wish I had that. Um, she'll like, it, it's one of those, you know, trade-off thing. Now, granted, right now, because she's pregnant, she sleeps a lot. So she sleeps through everything, and she has to rewatch it if she cares enough. Um, so I save it for when she's not. So, uh, <laughs> um, But I, she watches The Flash with me, which is amazing, because I didn't think she would actually watch it. But she's like, as, as she put it, and as I mentioned before, she likes it because they have superpowers. <laughs> Whereas on Arrow... Arrow's a dude in a suit. Doesn't matter that he has mad skills and, and a team and, you know, kind of like Batman has mad skills and, and tech and everything and, and is the world's greatest detective. She's like, he doesn't have power. Superman would beat him. I'm like, <laughs> Batman would outsmart Superman. But, yeah, so, I mean, we have geeky arguments like that at times, but most of the time I'm, I'm the one sitting there explaining the shows because she forgets. Um, My wife is suffering from superhero burnout. We watch... We still have to finish Constantine, because that's... I really hope it gets picked up again, though. I'm not sure. <coughs> she used to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with me. She won't watch that. Ugh, it sucks, because she sunk a season and a half into it, and then she just kind of gave up. And what sucks, because now it's really getting good before Age of Ultron. Now that they've introduced the whole Inhumans element. Although, she'll watch The Flash with me. Um, Wait, you want to hear something funny? I, Blanchard and I were having an argument the other night about uh, one of those shows. I think it was... He won't let the grudge die on the fact of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the fact that they brought Coulson back. And I can say this because he can't interrupt me here. Although I'm sure when he listens to this, he'll be shaking his hand at his screen um, and banging his head on the desk. But he he can't get past the fact that they revived Coulson in the show. I'm like, so dude, he, it, it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Nobody's truly dead. Well, and he he um, he um he watched eight episodes into the first season, and then he stopped watching, and then he has the audacity to sit here and tell me that there's no uh, there's no explanation for Coulson's revival or, or any of the other stuff that happens. And I'm like, dude, you have to freaking watch the show. Yeah, pretty much. You can't much. sit here and pass judgment on it when you haven't watched it. Yeah. It's like it's like his his Green Lantern tangent where he goes every time I talk about something with Ryan Reynolds and then he goes to uh, Van Wilder and I don't know. Yeah, you see, I that. I hate it when people do that. Like for example, Blair's called my bluff more than a few times on certain things like this. Um, for example, I used to think the show One Trill One Tree Hill was stupid. And I know that's a teen romance thing. But I'm like, all right, motherfucker. Let's give it a shot. So I went balls deep for six seasons. After that, it does get pretty fucking stupid. Um, so it's kind of like Smallville. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just, it just kind of tapers off. Like, here's your logical end point. You probably should have just stopped. But for reasons unknown, you kept going. Um, and she called me on Veronica Mars. I'm thinking, all right, I've got no real interest. Whatever. Turns out the show is fucking awesome. And I'll turn her on to something. And I'm like, it's always like, okay, if I'm going to be able to talk shit about it, I better know what the hell I'm talking about. Hell, I've even sat through episodes of 
Grey's Anatomy, ER, and all this other stupid medical bullshit. Well, like, some of the shows... I'm trying to get my wife to watch Blacklist right now. Mm -hmm. um, Because we have Netflix, and she can go back and watch the entire first season. Um, So I'm trying to get her into that, because I really enjoy the show, and I think she would, too, because she likes, you know, the kind of Hannibal Lecter-ish type characters and, and that kind of stuff, so... And she liked 24, and I kind of equated that it's a mix between Silence of the Lambs and 24, um, in a sense. In, in, in weird amalgamation ways, anyway. But, um, like, I, I can't stand Walking Dead because, it, to me, it's, it's just... I, and I have watched it with her on occasion. It, um, not, now, not all the seasons, but I've watched enough episodes with her because I'm it, in the same room. Is it just too grim for you? I don't know, it's just too boring to me. It's a lot of character development. In fact, I didn't expect the Walking Dead show to be as deep in character as it is. And I know I, someone's I kind of expected... yelling at the screen telling me there's no character development right now. I know what's happening. Well, I mean, I kind of wish that there was more like Resident Evil to it than what it currently is, because it's just it's kind of bleh and it's just Dude, I would people... reach to the screen and punch you right now for that. I wish Resident Evil was more serious. Well, I, I'm not saying that Resident fan. Evil is good. I'm saying it needs some of that influx into The Walking Dead to make it interesting to me. I think you I'm just not saying to it needs to go right balls episodes. deep and is stupid. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll give you that. There are some very boring episodes where nothing really happens, but character development. I just, I just wish the monsters were actually more of a focal point than having to deal with these sick, sadistic people that are in their own little villages. Yeah, it's funny. The whole. The whole tagline of The Walking Dead is don't fear the dead, fear the living. Which is kinda, eh. I guess we'll wait so, and see what happens when the spinoff show happens. Like, it'll get canceled. See, I don't know, unless it's supposed to be a prequel. So, well, they, tr- they tried doing that with Supernatural. They tried doing a, a spinoff in an episode, and then they were like, oh, we're going to do the spinoff series, and then it got canceled before it ever hit. But look at The Flash, the backdoor pilot with Arrow. But I think that's a different situation entirely, too, though. Yeah, I mean... Like, it'll each be... one has its own case, which is kind of strange. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what all comes out of it. I mean, I mean, now's a really good time for horror television there. I know there's talk of a Resident Evil TV series, actually. I can't remember where I heard that, though. Um, I think... Now, maybe... see that, I would probably watch. See, but it depends. Do they <laughs> but follow... if they can keep the storyline closer to the games instead yes. of closer to the movie. Or find a happy medium, because honestly, some, up until the remake back in 2002, and now the HD re-release, the Resident Evil story was a bloody mess. Um, and it's only recently kind of made sense, but then again, anything after Resident Evil 4 is frankly stupid. Um, 6, although I will frankly admit, 6 is a guilty pleasure of mine, because it is so ridiculous, um... You'd have to play it. Just well, see, I can't play games friends. like that because they just, they weird me out. I oh, have yeah. To, you, I, I can't play anything like that because, like, where there's dark corners and then creepy shit jumping out, I just, it, it I can't play it. Oh, my God, you need to play Dead Space. I, I, it, it's a game that'll make you drop a load in your pants. <laughs> play that game in the dark with the sound up, and if you're alone in the house, it's really quiet and shit, that game can freak the shit out of you. Dude, I had a hard enough time playing, like, the, the Batman games having shit jump out at me. Oh, my God. I want you to play Dead Space. I want you to do a Let's Play series of Dead Space. Because it is so good. Or stuff like that. Or, hell, even um, The Last of Us. If you play that and you don't go Rambo and you play it very stealth-like, that game can be intense as all shit. Which is amazing. That's one of the best games of last generation, I think, hands down. Some people might disagree with me. They are wrong. Um, but The Last of Us is one of... You know what, team? I'm actually going to look and see if I have my copy for PS3. And Because you... Wait, do you have a PS3? Nope. Fuck, I thought you had one. Shit. Nope, I got a 360. Oh, I was going to give it to you. Um, that's, that's, that and the Wii are like my latest consoles. like Or newest... Welcome to 2007. Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> I can't afford a new console. They cost too damn much and they change too much. Well, speaking of, well, each console cycle is getting about 
seven to ten years now actually in fact not anymore they're actually talking that this cycle is only going to be about three years and they're going to move on i doubt it i really doubt it like ps4 the architecture's there for it to be there for a long time same with xbox one but it's just a glorified pc kind of yeah i mean i mean because at this point i have an xbox 360 controller all i have to do is buy it for the pc and i can play it on there forever pretty much yeah i mean like one of the cool things is you mentioned consoles changing all the time i'm actually giving you a console um this week actually um I'm i'm giving you a nintendo 2ds which is the 3ds without the 3d function because you know what not very many games use it to its full effect, and it's kind of a gimmick more than it is anything, which is fine. Like, it looks awesome for games like Star Fox 3D or Luigi's Mansion, stuff like that. That is legit awesome. But if you play games like, say, Pokemon or Smash Brothers, you don't need it. And the 2DS was meant to be an entry point into the 3DS game market for more affordable people. So they can play these games. And now, Nintendo has released the new 3DS XL, which I currently have, which is not released for another few weeks. And I don't think a lot of games are going to use the more horsepower in it. But I know in Japan, there's not that many games that have it. Um, Like, I think for North America right now, Majora's Mask uses it, and Monster Hunter or Ultimate, which I've got both of them, but I haven't either yet you know what those remind me of the old game and watch the consoles themselves yeah the 2ds 3ds i could see that in fact having a skin like that might actually be kind of awesome actually um, I, i'm pretty sure it's i mean it's there there's the, you know like the 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 orange donkey kong one that they had yeah back in the day that's basically what the 3ds is there is one variant. Actually, I'm very glad I waited, but I kind of wish I didn't. They had one that came out of GameStop. It was an exclusive. It was a 3DS XL that looked like a Nintendo. They also had one that was a Smash Brothers variant. They had a Yoshi one. Looks so cool. Now, the one that I got is just plain black. Though there is a Monster Hunter version and a Majora's Mask version coming out. Although the ones we get over here in North America, because we didn't get the smaller new 3DS, which I know doesn't make any sense, doesn't have the interchangeable face plates, which kind of sucks. But there are tons of websites out there where you can customize the stickers and everything. I actually spent like an hour on a website last night trying to design a Mega Man Air Man one for my like 3DS. Because I turned into that big of a nerd for like an hour. Um but I'm thinking, I really don't want to cut the vinyl for that. In fact, I'd almost take it to one of those side places and have them do it. Like, here, here's 20 bucks. Please do this, because I'm stupid. Um, but, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to give you this console, because handheld gaming has never been this good. Like, well, see, the last time I've had a console, or a handheld gaming, I had the Game Boy Advance. Great console. Smallish I actually did like that a lot. Great console. Um, because Nintendo, when they develop first party, almost all their games are pure aces. Very rarely do you get a shitty first party game out of Nintendo. And if you want something just to play on the go... Hell, you, Steve, when you go to conventions, 3DS Spot Pass is your best friend. You meet so many cool people from around the world. Um... When I had my original 3DS at PAX, I had people from Australia, China, and it was so cool. I was meeting all these people. I had famous people on my 3DS. I had Reggie from Nintendo on my 3DS. I had, um, I want to say I had Hideo Kojima, but I can't say that for certain. Um, And I had, you know, other famous people that I know, people like Spoonie and Kyle A. Bear and all that shit. It was really cool. And you get competitive with that, too. But having this system allows you to play Pokemon, Smash Brothers. If there's any game that brings people together at a convention, it's Pokemon. Actually, funny thing. At PAX, I keep bringing this up, but at most conventions, odds are there's a Pokemon League. 
there's somebody walking around. If you can beat him in a Pokemon battle or him or her, they'll give you a gym badge, which is really what? friggin' cool. Yeah. Like, um, a girl I know, her name is Sarah. She dresses up as a trainer at conventions. And if you whip out your like 3ds at her and you say, I challenge you, you battle it out. You win, get a badge. It's so much fun to like, kind of do that stuff. And like I said, handheld gaming is so good now. And the fact that local wireless is so good. Like one of the best experiences I've had was playing Super Street Fighter 4 on my 3DS or playing Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on my PS Vita, which is a system that does not get nearly enough love in North America, which is utterly tragic. Because it's a really good console, just no one gives a shit about it. Which sucks. Um, like there's some really cool games where like, Persona 4 Golden. If you want an, a role-playing game that'll eat your life, it's so worth it. Or to play your old PSP games that you, that you can still download. It's pretty sick. Or playing PS1 games on the go. Like, I was playing Resident Evil 2 on my Vita for, like, a long-ass time. Um, stuff like that. Or playing Super or playing Street Fighter Alpha 3 and stuff like that. Plus, on older handhelds, like, like um, PSP Goes, you can hack those to play Nintendo games, or if you have an older DS or whatever, you can get flashcards with custom firmware that can run uh, game that can run Super Nintendo games. I remember I was uh, playing Turtles in Time on a, on like a, a DS like three or four years ago, which was so much fun. I'm sorry, oh, just nerd boner. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean. Gaming on the iOS and Android, it's cool, and the OUYA's a thing, and Oculus Rift and all that stuff. I can't, I can't get into PC gaming or stuff like that. I mean, like I said, the most addictive iOS game I have is that WWE Supercard, and if they put that on a cartridge, I'd never stop playing. Even if you put microtransactions in it, which there are right now, but I haven't spent more than like a dollar... I would so seriously play it like a shit ton more. And I don't know, just, but I'm probably wrong. I know there's a lot of really great gaming out there for it. I just can't be bothered. I, I tend to play PC when I can, but again, it, it kind of depends. I prefer my 360. Oh, yeah. Because I like the controller. I like. I mean, I know I can use it in the PC, and I have on occasion. But like, I have Unreal Tournament Three, which I play on my PC because it's free to play online. Whereas on my 360, it costs for the Xbox Live, and I don't really care to do it on my Xbox for the most part. Um, Xbox free games though is pretty sick. Just saying. I, I'm really saving up my Bing rewards points to sign up for Xbox Live. You know, um, I'm going to try and get you, like, some codes for Xbox Live. I'll see if I can get you, like, a free year or something. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I've never tried it. Online gaming, if you play the right games, can be fun. I used to play Mass Effect 3 with a group of my friends. My friend Tiffany, Pat, and my buddy Brandon. And uh, we used to have our squad. Actually, one of my tattoos, my N7 on my right arm, is because we played Mass Effect 3 so much. That was me and Tiffany's trigger finger, or that's our trigger arm, because uh, we're both right-handed uh, when we shoot. And we did that because we're so hardcore Commander Shepard all the fucking way. Um, and playing competitive, like, Street Fighter and stuff like that online, sure, you'll get, you'll get cheesed more than a few times, but it forces you to become better. Like, I didn't become a competitive gamer until probably last March when Titanfall came out. Like, I, like I, I used to play Street Fighter online. I'd get my ass kicked by, you know, kids that were obviously way better than me. And I used to say, play in my face or not at all. Like, like the whole kind of couch co-op thing. Mm -hmm. But when I started playing over Xbox Live and PSN, I don't know, just something, if, if you play the right game, you find that right rhythm, it really brings out a different spirit in you. And if you guide it without getting aggressive about it, it can ch change how you view online entirely. Like for example, like for years, I used to say, you know what? I'm not playing this online. Fuck you. It's not. It's 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 not going to happen. Yet this year, like I said, I played Titanfall, 
like obsessively. I put over a thousand games into that because I actually showed the stats and it's sad. Um, I'm playing Call of Duty and Modern Warfare right now. I'm over a thousand games right now, and the game came out in November. So first off, let's take a moment in the podcast to laugh at me. Okay, and I did. But it's just it's weird though because you meet people that make you want to be better. As long as you don't let the little kids get in your head and you realize you're both here for the same reason to have fun. Sure, there's the odd person that's going to troll, the odd person that, that's going to hack. But for the most part, it can be a really fun experience and people want to encourage you. And there's also other online games like, say, Hearthstone, which is that Blizzard card game that's on, that's on the PC. That's got a very good community with it. Um, other games like... DayZ, not necessarily. There's a lot of people that are d- dicks in that game. Interesting experience in the human condition, though, let me tell you that. Um, but yeah, I mean, online can be a lot of fun if you play with the right people or you have someone to walk you through it the first time. But uh, honestly, dude, you're missing out so much by not playing on 360 on lot of online. But considering your console generation behind... I wonder what's going to happen in Xbox Live on the 360 in, say, two years. I imagine it'll probably get canceled. Or maybe they'll keep up certain games. And it sucks, though, because I dumped an amount of money I don't even want to think about into Mass Effect 3. Thank God I got a lot of it for free. Um, And I won't be able to access all my guns and content because it'll just go away. Unless they patch in, oh yeah, here's offline horde mode, have fun. They're not going to do that. I can assure you they're not going to do that. Um, and it sucks, though, because people like you get... You miss out the experience of, say, playing Gears of War 2 online. Playing... Oh, I'm trying to think of other really good games that were amazing online. Well, see, like, I play... Uh, I've played Diablo 3 online on my PC. Yeah. I've played DC Universe, um, which I, I kind of play both every now and again, uh, even recent. <laughs> We need to play our Star Trek online at some point. I need to reinstall that. <laughs> Same here. Here's 17 gigs. Where, where are the patches? Actually, speaking of games that went free-to-play recently, it was announced um, a couple days ago, as of this recording, that Elder Scrolls Online is going subscription-free in March, and the console version is finally coming in June. If there ever was a botched MMO launch... That should have been huge. It's that. I love Bethesda. I love Zenimax. I make no lies about it. I think they're awesome. Although the Evil Within I thought sucked. But Elder Scrolls, it should have been Skyrim online. It should have been this massive immersive world. Tamriel, you shouldn't give a shit about what's happening. My god. My god, did that game suck. And you had to pay a $30 a month subscription off on top of that. In, in addition to buying the game at like 90 bucks. Hell, I Now, do you think it's actually worth it uh, for these companies to actually make the games free to play? It depends on the experience, because I know Dungeons and Dragons Online with Neverwinter Nights, you can pay to get stuff, I think, or stuff like, I think even World of Warcraft is free up until level 20. And... It, it, it depends on what you're kind of getting out of it. Um, I guess if you've got a group of friends or if you can make friends very quickly, I can see it because then the company will make money off of in-game purchases like, say, Guild Wars, for example. You buy the game once and it's yours forever. And you can play online. I, I don't know how their revenue model works for that, but I think for certain games it's worth it. Like, if, for example, if Marvel ever figured out their MMO online, like like DC, it could be awesome. And even DC Online could be really cool, but I think that's another botched opportunity as well. I think it's it's kind of hindered. And I think it's just because of, like, in some aspects, it's kind of, like, piss-poor um, graphics and implementation. Yeah, um, well, like, just because you have a, a big property doesn't mean it's going to be great. Well, I mean, like, I, I think, I, I mean, I love the voice cast. I love, you know, the creating your own character thing. I just, I find that some of it just kind of ultimately sucks. Because um, yeah. oh, it gets yeah. repetitive, and then some of the things are so ungodly hard to do. 
Well, that or you need like a party of like ten or more people to to go do certain things. Like that's the thing. I I like I don't like MMOs for that very reason. You have to be social. And yet, I just finished telling you I love social gaming. I don't know that it it, it, it makes no sense. Like for example, I I, I know uh, Mike there Booth Powers loves Destiny, but. You have to go to a website nine times out of ten to get people to do a looking for group. I want to do the raid on Crota or the Vault of Glass or whatever. I couldn't be bothered. If, if I can't play it single player, I don't care. I like having the like, option to have people with me, but I don't want it all the time. I don't I don't like a game if I don't have the option to do both. Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, I could care less about the online thing, but that's because most of the time... I don't have access to actually play it online. So to me, like the, the um, personal experience of sitting there playing the game by myself is usually fine. Um, like I just got Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi, which is from 2011. I paid 30 bucks for it, um, which I, I have to say that Dragon Ball Z games, much like Mario and uh, Super Smash Brothers, uh, pretty much keep their value. Um, because I think even to this date, um, for the, for the Wii or PlayStation 2, uh, cause I could buy it for the Wii, but, um, Budokai Tenkaichi 2 and 3 both still cost upward to $40. Yeah, because they're really good games that people know, and so they, like, hang on to them. And I, I'll probably eventually pick up Tenkaichi, or Budokai Tenkaichi 3, um, again, because I used to own it on the PS2 back in the day, I still have a Wii, so I can still get it. And I think they have it for 360 as well, so I'll probably still get it for No, that, they but... only have it for the Wii and the PS2. Ah, okay. It sucks, well, I would have loved to have that on 360. Uh, um, I would too. But in Ultimate Tenkaichi, I played it. The only thing that pisses me off about that game is the fact that when you go through it, it there's too many damn cutscenes that interrupt stuff. Like, you'll do one move, and then there's a cutscene. And don't and then, play Burst Limit, because you will encounter nothing but that. I rented that one, so I, I knew what I was getting into back when that came out. Um, but uh, Ultimate Tenkaichi, I didn't mind it so much, because they did explain some of the story, and you did get to unlock stuff, but it seems like a lot of it was hindered, unlike Tenkaichi, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, um, where it actually lets you play through the damn game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I feel like I got gypped on some of the characters because, yeah, it has a you can create your own character thing in this, um, three of them. Uh, and it does have slots that are open for, like, five more characters that you can unlock, but there's no extra characters I checked. Um, and it doesn't let you have Super Saiyan 4, uh, Goku, or Vegeta. It goes right to Super Saiyan 4, Gogeta. And you do get to play some of the villains, like... Uh, Janemba and uh, Hildegarn from uh, the, movies, right? uh, the movies and Metal Kula and, and stuff like that, um, which some of those boss battles are ungodly difficult. Um, and the buttons seem kind of nerfed at points, like when you're supposed to break away from a, a multi-punch battle. Um, it, it says you got to press all four buttons at the same time, you know, in repetition to... Uh, break away. Well, I've done it once out of the entire time playthrough of that game, and that was in the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can get red screwed on those games. And, but I mean, like overall, I enjoy the game. It's just, I mean, I, I beat it already, but I've only had it a week. Um, but it, it, it's, I mean, it's shit like that that bothers me with those, but I, I wanted to get back into the fighting Dragon Ball Z games, and I know I can play it online, too, so that's kind of exciting, but... I'm kind of hoping when the, the new one comes out, it'll be better. Universe? Yeah, I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to get a review copy of that, so I'll let you know how it is. I yeah, you'll have to let me know, because I think that that's coming out for 360 as well. I'm not 100% sure on that, but although you sitting in, in the previous console generation... You do sit in a rather unique place, because right now... All the games are going down. Exactly. You're going to see now is the time to build a library. I mean, I remember when GameStop was liquidating their GameCube, their Xbox, and their PS2 libraries, I picked up gems for, 
like under 10 bucks because they didn't know what they were sitting on or it was an underrated game or stuff like that. So right now having a 360, you got some really good stuff and please for the love of God, tell me you've got Skyrim. I do not. <sighs> Steve, 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 Steve. It's one of those things when you're poor, you buy what you know you're going to like. Skyrim, Skyrim is a game that will eat you. It will consume you. My wife just said she was a Skyrim widow for the better part of almost two years. I didn't platinum that game until late last year. No rim! That's what she would cry. I remember sitting up on Christmas morning. She's like, Mike, we gotta go to my parents. Can't. Dragon. Um, it was... It, that and I filled my house with cheese. I'm not kidding. I filled an entire cottage with cheese wheels. Um, and then the now, game, do you collect all the achievements when you play the games? You know what? I've only recently started doing that. Like, I've only... See, yeah, because I don't care about the achievements. I care about unlocking all the characters. You want content as opposed to accolades. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, with Skyrim, some of them, they're not hard to get. You just have to be patient with them. Those stuff... It's like... Like, Halo get 30 kills without dying. Yeah, that's never going to happen for me. Well, and it's, it's like playing the Batman Arkham games where you have to do the Riddler stuff. If it's in my path, I'll get it. But I'm not going to go out of my way to go get them. And some of them are so damn difficult to get, I just don't care. See, I will do those if I know the content's interesting. Like, for example, I'll do anything in my power to unlock story content. Like, I care about what's going on. If it happens to unlock something cool along the way, awesome. Like, although, right now, it's funny you mention that. Just before we were recording, I was playing Saints Row 4 Gat Out of Hell. And I started doing achievements. I'm thinking, well, you know what? I've come this far. And I've got the game 95% beat. And I've got, like, 70% of the achievements. I'm thinking, you know what? I might be able to pull this off. And I don't know. Just so Sometimes I will do it. Sometimes I won't. I've cleared... Three games in my life, 100%. One was a kid's game, and I feel bad about even admitting that one. It was um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, based on the new Nickelodeon series for the Xbox uh, 360, last year the year before last. How was that game? Fucking terrible. <laughs> oh, fucking it, it, terrible. I'm glad I didn't buy that then. Yeah... But I, I, it, it looked bad. I was I was kind of gauging because like a lot of the problem I have is like I'm trying to figure out if it's worth me actually putting you know the money into buying something. Oh. Um, so a, a lot of the time, like like the Dragon Ball Z, the Batman Arkham, uh, the Unreal tournaments, like those, I know I'm for sure going to play again. Yeah. So I always buy those. But... Yeah, like back back in the wild days of game journalism um or at least more in the internet age it was kind of hard to even trust the reviews you'd get on certain things some other people might say it's awesome other people might say it sucks um like i've played some games that people can't fucking stand i think they're great i think they're fun um but yeah i mean there's a lot of good gaming i think you're going to be able to get into in fact i'm actually trying Probably later on this year, when I'm in a little bit better of a financial spot, I'm going to send you a care package of 360 games. Like, all right, here's my personally curated collection for you. Um, please play these, and if you don't, I'll beat the shit out of you. Um, that's why, like, like I'm saying, dude, Skyrim will eat you. And it's a game I – actually, it's funny. Once again, at a press event, I'm sitting there with my able-bodied youthful ward, Scotty Do. And we're talking with one of the developers from Bethesda. And in a very unprofessional way, I don't care. I'm like, oh, yeah, Giants, Arrows, yeah, whatever. And I'm just kind of listening. And Scotty's sitting there. He's gripped. The seat. He's like, oh, God, really? All right, cool. So that was in September. November rolls around. And I get the game about three weeks early. I'm not playing anything. I'm done with Batman. I'm done with all the big releases of the year that I got so far and I throw it in my 360 I start the game at 1 o'clock at night guess what time I went to bed 
Two days later. Uh, about four o'clock the next day. And I was like, oh, well, my, that is the sun. It is setting again. Shit. Uh, and I just, I couldn't believe how much I got into it. Because normally, <laughs> I don't like fantasy games. I don't like Lord of the Rings stuff. I like the movies, but I don't care for the games. And Skyrim was the game that changed my opinion on all that. Because everything you do has a consequence. Hell, if you walk into the first town and kill a certain person, that entire quest line is gone from the game. You can <laughs> fuck yourself right over if you want. But the game doesn't give you any restrictions. You can do pretty much well, whatever you want when you want. Sure, certain things have, like, you have to be of a certain, um, accomplish certain things to trigger other things, but other than that, though, you can wander around the game and steal cheese the entire time if that's what you want to do. Or you can, uh, it's so intense and it, it, it's so weird, but it's so much fun. And if you don't want to get it for 360, it's almost always on sale on Steam. Grab it. Play it with a 360 controller. I do. And put the mods into it. Your computer may cry, but it's so worth it. When you can see these beautiful scenes happening, when you, the first time you fight a dragon in the snow, it lands and kicks up a whole gust of stuff, and you blow this thing halfway across the screen with a dragon shout. Let me tell you, there's nerd chubbies, and then there's nerd woodies. This is a nerd woody. So awesome. Anyway, I think we've rattled on about video games enough. Yeah. I can go for hours, and I'm sorry. No, that's fine. It's my secret um, passion. I should be secret. Fuck that. <laughs> we, we did have... Uh, um, you know, my, Microsoft. Like, really, the only thing that's that's memorable from the whole Microsoft press conference they had the other day the is the fact upgrades. that yes, free upgrades for Windows Seven, Eight, and Eight Point One users, and you can stream year. Xbox One game to add to any device, which is awesome. Yeah, so basically, you've caught up to the PlayStation Four and the Vita. Awesome about time, and the fact that Cortana is going to be part of the operating system, which I think is actually kind of cool. It, it'll it's it's definitely a better idea than uh, Microsoft's battery operated buddy, See, better known as Bob. Honestly, man, if I, if Microsoft offered it to iOS users, hey, pay twenty dollars, you can now have Cortana on your phone. Bang, done. I don't know instead if, of instead of Siri. Fuck Siri. I want Cortana. First off, she sounds sexier. Two, that's Cortana. That's the Master Chief's person. That's freaking awesome. That must be why Microsoft's developing those, like, 3D goggles. Oh, man. So they can have Cortana come alive. That would be so cool if Cortana would just... And they got that holographic display shit. Yeah, if she just appeared and, like, hello, user, what do you need today? That would be awesome. And if it's... She's your holographic phone doctor. Oh, my God, make that shit happen. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm fairly excited for this. I'm excited to see what Spartan the browser is going to bring to things now. So I'm kind of hoping we see some improvements on the Xbox one end of things. Like when windows 10 launches, they'll update some stuff on Xbox one. So maybe we get the Spartan browser with flash support for the love of Christ. Um, and stuff like that. I'd love to see that. Cause I think that'd be pretty wonderful. Um, so yeah, I mean, there was that I'm trying to think what else happened might give a crap about actually kind of a slow news week <coughs> i'll say that entirely um because i did find a ton of shit but yeah but it's um, all stuff that would take us like hours to gloss over yeah i mean basically you know the fact that you know batman vs superman art's coming out and little trickles batman maybe in suicide squad deadpool starts filming in march uh they found Resident supergirl Evil's from glee or something yeah, another girl being another person being pulled from Glee to uh, superhero dim. Uh, Fantastic Four trailer confirmed to be a part of Kingsman movie in February. Oh, now I'm gonna have to go see. You know, all right, but say no, I'm gonna go see that. No, I'll wait to YouTube it. I'm gonna wait for YouTube. I don't give a shit enough. Oh, supposedly um, it's not that bad. I, I, the one director, the guy I think he directed Kick Ass or something, said, or no, Ask My First Class, that Matthew Vaughn said, you know what? It's not that bad. You know what's funny? All of the Fox and Sony and, and all their company, you know, involvements are 
going to be total shit once Marvel reboots their universe by having Galactus eat it all. I think that'd be awesome. Because they're playing the entire like DC convergence thing where they're like meshing all the different universes together to create, you know, this one continuity instead of the 616 and the, you know, unlimited or whatever. Oh, yeah, with the whole Secret Wars thing. Yeah. I think that's their be version of convergence. I'm really hoping Miles Morales becomes Spider Man and stays Spider Man. Yeah, they'll probably have awesome. him and Peter Parker there. I don't know. I, I kind of think it'll, it'll be like Highlander and there could be only one. But they'll find a way to bring Peter Parker back if Miles Morales doesn't work out. They'll call him Peter Porker. You know what? The amazing Spider Ham has to stay in continuity. Yeah. Him and Howard the Duck. Um, um, yeah, so they've had that. They've had the, you know, the uh, the talks of Beverly Hills Cop relaunch in Detroit. Not part of plans unless the script improves, saying that Betty Murphy won't do it. Unless I'm it's surprised. better. Well, that, he's like, what? Like, how old is Betty Murphy? He's gotta be over 50. He's over 50, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna believe that Axel Foley. <laughs> A I, fat Axel Foley. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm just not seeing it. Like, you, you'd have to have a new young actor take it. And it's not like there's any lack of funny black actors in Hollywood right now. Well, my, my whole thing is Judge Reinhold is old as fuck. <laughs> See, have him back, but as the police chief. I think he would be at this point, because the other guys yeah. are all dead. Yeah. Is John Aston dead? Like, mm, no, he's not, I don't okay. think. Um, I don't... Um, Although he was retired in the movie Gondu. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, of course, uh, you know, like we mentioned, all the Microsoft crap. And then uh, um, the whole thing about the Lazarus pit not being used in Arrow, which, like I said, I've seen the episode. I watched it before we recorded, and it's such a bullshit cop out. Like, I don't even know what the hell they did. It's. He's okay now. Basically. Yeah, it's. It, I was at least hoping that it would be like a, a like half season long of you know I, I'm still sure it'll be that long before he actually comes back to uh, Starling City, but it's just it's ridiculous and they're getting closer to uh, the Adam actually. Um, and then you know Heroes Reborn. Oh yeah, who did that recently just get? Uh, Zachary Levi is going to be the lead. Interesting. Is Hayden Panettiere going to come back, or the guy playing uh, Jerry? I'm going to guess no. But uh, the only the only uh, cast member besides him that's going to be in it is Noah Bennett. Oh yeah, yeah. So HRG, yeah. Yeah, it's they're going to have the horn room glasses. I th- see. I think him and Hero were some of my favorite characters. Like, I liked Hero, I liked Siler, I liked the other characters, um, or I liked Peter in there only for the fact that he didn't have to eat their pieces, you know, of their brain to get the powers until they, like, nerfed him and then he could only do one at a time. I liked, you know what, my nickname for Peter for the first season was Sponge. Um, that's all he did was just randomly take powers. Um, although one of the best arcs in that show, but they completely fucked it up was when Siler was starting to become a good guy. That would have been all that would have been a great path to redemption story. But no, they fucked it up. Yeah, um, they screwed up that whole show. Like that whole first season was crap. Yeah, like the first season was cool. Second season had its moments. Third I thought was great. And the fourth season was stupid. So yeah. so so stupid. But I mean, I'm hoping that this actually turns out well because I did enjoy Heroes. Um, but it's it's going to be 13 episodes, and it's a new standalone story arc. Um, but it'll still be glad, uh, nice to see the horn room glasses back because, uh, I, I to me, I felt like he was like a major part of the show, even with not having powers. Yeah, absolutely. I really hope. Although I hope in some way they address what happened to the other characters, like Claire like Parker, stuff like that. I think it'd be cool. They all died and they pull a men in black and they, they use <laughs> a giant, a giant uh, memory eraser. There we go. They were all neutralized. I can deal with that. Yep. Sentinels. That'd Sentinels. Be so cool. Um, um, but yeah, uh, 
I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah. So I hope you guys have liked just me and Steve waxing poetic and me pipping out cons like they're sitting on the corner. Even though we never actually addressed the entire uh, being being married and, and geek, you know. I think we kind of did, but it's something we, we can easily expand upon later. Yeah. Like, I'd like to get my wife on here at some point, so maybe some, more, some night when she's not working the next day, we'll bring her out here and we'll just have a conversation, because... She brings me down the earth with stuff, but at the same time, here, here's something fantastic and awesome. This is way better than stupid rom com number twelve. And I don't, I, and I don't say that to be sexist because she has shown me some pretty cool shit. But uh, come on, man, robots. Well, I, I do have to give my my wife this one prop. I'm. It's the reason why I like Supernatural. See, my wife tried to get me into Supernatural, and I just couldn't care. But maybe I'm well, not in the right mood for it. But when we, she showed me Veronica Mars, I marathon that shit. We we caught Supernatural at after the first season was already aired. Um, we went to a, a video store. Yes, we have those still. Um, although there are a few and far between. But the, uh, we went to this one and we rented the entire first season of the show. And I'm like, I'm not watching that. That looks like shit. And it looks like horror. And then she had me watch it. And she's like, that's good, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we marathon the first season. And we've been watching it uh, as it airs ever since. So season 2 to 10. And uh, I'm wondering what the hell they're going to do with the season 11. But <laughs> it's the first CW show to go over that. But I, In my wife's defense, she got me, like I, like I mentioned very early on, she got me into all these food shows. She got me back in the Survivor after being absent for like 10 years. So I'm glad we have that. And I got her into The Flash. And she watched an age, a season and a half of Age of S.H.I.E.L.D. So maybe... And she watched Constantine with me. And she likes that. And she likes Doctor Who and Walking Dead. So you know what? I think it turned out okay. I, I think we both turned out even on this one. Um. So what do we want to talk about on next Alter Geek? Or I guess we just kind of swing through the fences whenever we... Five minutes before the record. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I, I will ask the the listener questions. Sorry for not getting to those this week. We've just run a little long. Uh, you think? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask these questions. Uh, do, do, do. Are you excited for the changes to Windows by Microsoft? Or do you not really give a rat's ass at this point? Um, if so, what size of rat do you not give a rat's ass at? Yes. How big of a rat's ass do you care? Um, and then the other thing is, is uh, this is more of a fun speculative one that I'm kind of curious to see. If you could have any versus film of any characters, who would you pit to the death? Who would win? Robocop, Terminator, Robocop. What? What? <laughs> That's my dream project. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to see what the answer is to that, because that's kind of a new question, and it, it's fun. Um, even though I, I mistakenly asked the same question at one, one point on, uh, last week's about, you know, what, what tech item would you like to see in existence? And, uh, Andre was like, uh, wasn't the tech question asked before? <laughs> and he's probably right. I probably did. Next time, say it in a, in a funny accent. Thus, it's not the same question. Well, it is, but. Do it, but... do it in Scotty's voice. There you go. Um, so I guess coming up for you and I, I know we're going to do another Future Imperfect in like a, like a week or two. Um, I, I know for Twig, we do Bill Murray at some point next week. Yeah, that's right. We got him tied up in our basement. Um, that'll be the Twig topic show for January. Can and, you, can you guys beat him and make him actually do good movies again? See, I don't know. He's so weird and I kind of want to find out why. Because he'll do awesome, then shit, awesome or awesome and nobody saw it well like because I, I think like the entire like the whole, whole last decade i think he's done shit for films lost in translation I, I haven't seen that one so i can't say anything about that but i'm saying like all the other ones i've seen that he's done in this decade are kind of see lost in translation and then come back that, that's your homework for the week and i'll watch uh, something that you recommend to me i don't know <laughs> That's right. You go watch Lost in Translation like a good film critic. Um, anyway. 
Um, so this is your show, so close this fucker out. Will do. Will do. Alrighty, so if you'd like to interact with the show, you can call the voicemail line, 502-526-5821. You can email us, feedback at geekcastradio.com. You can post your comments on the episode post on the website. You can get a hold of us on Twitter at Geekcast Radio, hashtag Altered Geek. My Twitter handle is at SCP21, and yours is, sir? Mine is at Birdman Dodd, and I tend to reply at all times of the day or night because I don't sleep. Yeah, that's the same thing for me. <laughs> so, as always, get Altered Geek Geeky with the Altered Geeks. See you next time. <laughs>